So those are my battleships. And that... So what this does is it measures radiation in microsieverts per hour. And the reason that I got it is because I've always been told that when you get on a plane uh, up at altitude, you get it between uh, about five or ten times background radiation or something. And I've always wanted to see it for myself. So I got a radiation meter to give it a go. Now, it gives readings in microsieverts per hour and background radiation is about 0.2. Give or take. It takes a little time to integrate up these things, but it, it will give a background reading in here of about 0.2. Eh, it takes a little time to sort of sort itself out. Anyway, so the question comes, how could you possibly find out if it's working? You need something radioactive. Um, fortunately, this house has some of the most incredible junk in it that you can imagine. And so, how I'm going to do it, I'm going to put that there. Oh, there we go. It's more like it. So, um... The thing that's actually radioactive is the clock behind it. Um, and it's a World War II era clock. So they used to use radioactive paint, which would glow in the dark. Um, and when this actually integrates up a bit, you'll find, yeah, so that's about seven times background. At this distance, you're getting about seven times background. And if I move it up close, what you'll find is it goes absolutely crazy. In fact, if I actually leave it there, what you'll find is it'll bury the needle, um, which means that it's at least 50 times background. And it takes a while to integrate out. Yeah, 9.99. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, I'll turn that off, so <laughs> keep beeping. Uh, they used to radioactive paint that would glow in the dark, which means they could read these things in the dark, which was great. Um, and at the time they didn't really know that much about the hazards of radiation um, but even if they had so what I mean you're at seven times background when you're over here you're at 50 times background if you put your face right up against that and the people who flew these bombers had about a 10% chance of dying on every mission that they flew give or take now, it turns out the people who suffered most from these things was the girls who worked in the munitions factories because they, these were all painted on by hand with radioactive paint. And the girls who used to do these she used to lick the brushes to get nice fine points on these things. And so they, they really did suffer quite badly from enhanced rates of cancer and such like. But anyway, so yeah, it looks like the radiation meter works. So when I next fly, which will be in a few days, I'm going to see if it really does go up about five or ten times background or something. I'm, I'm just curious. Anyway, also here we have a load of other sort of uh, interesting stuff. So let's, let's do this one. If one person in a million can tell me what this is, I will be so impressed. So it's a really solid structure. Yeah. Top comes off. You know, aluminium top, and inside you've got this thing that rocks around, right? really very, very mobile. Um, and on one side it's got a load of fairly primitive electronics, and on the other side you've got this sort of enclosure. But what's in the enclosure is actually quite interesting. You've got two little sets of coils like that. So, the question is, what is it? And like I said, I will be so impressed if anyone gets this. So it's like a big, heavy chunk of metal that's had rubber seals, two sets of rubber seals, both of which have been cut out. Okay, I've softened a little. I'll let you in on a secret. It's actually part of a weapon of World War II. And this device could have potentially changed the entire course of the war. It really was a potential war winner. And it scared the shit out of the British. And if no one gets it, I'll get my dad, who's actually the owner of this one, to let you in on what it is and what it does. And why something that seems so primitive could have potentially changed the course of a world war.